This video is intended to help you install and set up an Infoblogs VNIS appliance and configure it to be a DNS and DHCP server with IP address management. We are installing the Infoblogs VNIS 820 appliance on a VMware 5.0 ESXi server. The screens may be slightly different depending on your particular version of VMware. When you downloaded your VNIS appliance, you should have downloaded two files, an OVF and a VMDK. You should place them in the same folder and select the OVF file to install the VNIOS appliance. The settings we are using for this video may not be what you would choose to use. Name the virtual machine based on your naming scheme. When selecting a storage option, you will not see the same list as in the video, so pick a data store that can hold a 160 gigabyte image. It is up to you to decide how to provision the image. In this example, I am selecting thin provision, but you should select the appropriate option for your ESX environment. After the virtual appliance has been imported, you will need to open a console to complete the setup process. If the virtual appliance did not start after deployment, make sure to power on your VNIOS appliance now. To log into your VNIOS appliance, the login name is admin and the default password is infoblocks. These are all lowercase. The first thing we need to do is set a temporary 60-day evaluation license. We will be applying two license keys for this setup. The first will be to license the VNIOS appliance itself, and the second will be to license DNS, DHCP, and IP address management. During this process, the appliance will restart, so you may have to log in again to complete this step. Now that our VNIOS appliance is licensed, we need to give it an IP address so we can log in with the standard browser. In this setup, we will be using the same IP address for management and for protocol services. Consult the admin guide if you would like to separate management and protocol traffic. To log into the NIAS GUI, you will use a standard browser like Firefox or Chrome. When typing in the URL for vNIAS appliance, make sure you use HTTPS. The default login is admin and the password is infoblox. Again, they are all lowercase. On the first login, you will be presented with a grid setup wizard. You will be setting up your vNIAS appliance as a grid master. Since we are configuring a single vNIAS appliance, we will not be setting up a high availability pair. Please refer to the admin guide for detailed explanation of the benefits of an HA pair configuration. Select the time zone appropriate to your location and make sure the time is correct. After completing the grid setup wizard, your browser session will be terminated and you will have to log in again using HTTPS just like before. Now we will start configuring your NIAS appliance by first setting up DNS. By default, the appliance has all protocols disabled. We will start by enabling DNS queries. This tells NIAS whose queries are allowed. For this setup, we are allowing any IP address to send DNS queries to NIAS. For details on these settings, please refer to the admin guide. Now that we told NIAS who can send DNS queries, we need to define which NIAS appliances will be responding to these queries. The first step is to set up DNS name server groups. Name server groups allow you to tell NIOS which DNS servers will be authoritative for your zones. Name server groups make it trivial to add additional zones and also to add additional DNS name servers with just a few clicks. If you recall from earlier when naming the vNIOS appliance, we called it ns1.test.local. We need to create the DNS zone test.local. When adding the zone, we will tell NIOS to use the name server group we created, and now any DNS name server in that name server group will be authoritative for the test.local zone. Basic DNS is configured, so let's turn our attention to DHCP. Before we add a network, we want to set up some basic global settings. We'll define some global options. In this example, we will default the domain to be test.local, and we will use this VNIS appliance as the default DNS server.
A best practice is to have your DHCP server dynamically add DNS records. So we will enable dynamic DNS and have the DHCP servers by default add DNS records to the test.local domain. We will be adding the network from which the vNIOS's appliance's IP address is in. When we add the network, we will tell NIOS to automatically create the reverse mapping DNS zone. Since we defined a primary name server group, this reverse mapping zone will be serviced by the DNS servers in that name server group. The member tells NIOS which appliances are available to serve DHCP ranges to this network. At the network level, we can set the default gateway for this network to be used by all DHCP ranges in this network. You can see the global defaults for domain and DNS server are filled in for us from the global defaults. The next step is to define a DHCP range within the network and select the NIOS appliance that will serve the DHCP range. All the DHCP options are filled in for us from the network configuration. All the settings are complete for DNS and DHCP. However, by default, no protocols are running. So we need to tell NIOS to start the DNS and DHCP protocols. After starting the protocols, you will see a yellow alert, and it may take a few minutes to start the services. For this video, we have edited out that time, so be patient and monitor the system from the Grid Members tab and verify that both DNS and DHCP are green. Your NIOS appliance is now up and running and servicing both DNS and DHCP.